You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. I'm gonna let it shine, hide it under the bushel milk. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hi kids, this is the Uncultured Saints podcast and uh, those those sultry tunes you are listening to are from our, our co-host Pastor Leetzow from yeah. Wheat Ridge Evangelical Lutheran Church where they sing that yeah. every Sunday. <laughs> we do, we do, whether, whether, the, whether it's in the bulletin or not. Um, I just, I just, just sort of swagger on out to the center of the aisle. Right. Right, it's our. Uh, I make it our final communion hymn every single Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just staring at me like, uh, I mean, they don't leave. So, yeah, no, I mean, like, you, they they don't just sort of leave after after communion. They they listen to it, so it can't they be that to, bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, I get that. Do this it. can't be about you and your entertainment. This has to be for the people. Yeah, that's well, good times. Why do you say evangelical? Is it is it evangelical or evangelical? I always heard it as e. I don't know mm. what's the correct phonetical way of doing that with, with I don't, English. I, I don't. Is that made up a long e, short e? I I, I I think English just makes the rules up as it goes, like like us. But um, we're, we're going to pick up with that uh, spiritual in Mark chapter four, verse twenty one. We're just transitioning right away from that. What uh, happens if that's copyright? What are we going to do? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I'm not cutting it out. So, okay. uh... <laughs> All right. So, uh, and. Uh, I'm a scared of that right now, actually. And, <laughs> and very, he, this is 20 seconds. <laughs> and he be Jesus. We're at Mark uh, chapter four, verse 21. That can't be copyright. It's been around forever, right? <laughs> Mark four twenty one, uh, and he uh, be Jesus. Said, Jesus be uh, said to them, "Is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket? No, no, <laughs> or under a bed, and not on a stand. For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear." And he said to them, "Pay attention." To what you hear, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so, actually, I've, I've wondered this before. Like, how do you get that song out of this, this verse? Because, like, you have to... I, I just don't understand because it's like they read the one verse and then read nothing afterwards. I didn't, they didn't do anything. Right. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough of that. I mean, I do. I, all around well, the I, neighborhood. Just yeah. Out of I don't mind. know how many stanzas there are for it. But um, first of all, it's not about you. It's about Jesus. Uh, because this is this is the, the Jesus who is, is hidden under the guise of human flesh to be made manifest, to also be both true God and true man. Uh, what is what is, he is telling others to keep secret all through this gospel as we go along. Tell no one of this miracle. Tell no one of this miracle. It's because the hour has not yet been revealed for the Son of Man to be truly glorified, to suffer and die for our sins. Uh, Jesus is the light of the world, um, veiled un, under human likeness and flesh. And, and it will come to light. It, it will be made manifest. But this is this is in the, the resurrection. Yeah, it's it's interesting how he puts this, right? Because he, he asked this, uh, uh, it seems to be a rhetorical question, where we think the answer would be no, isn't, right? Isn't is that a, where you're supposed to say the no right. in the rhetorical question? Right. Is is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a no, bed? And not say, I'm going to no, let, it shine. Right. No, let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And, shine. Then, and then Jesus says, yeah, but... 
uh, we are going to put it under a, a bushel. Right. right. We're going to do that. Um, or I'm going to do that. Um, and and it's interesting because the the his rationale for this, um, it, I think it makes it can make logical sense, but then it also makes um, uh, a Christological sense as well. Yeah, you like that. That um, was pretty good. That, yeah. was, that was top notch. <laughs> because <laughs> tune in, kid. Singular. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> that's as, no, that is as high as it's going to go. Um, but no, there is something to be said, right? When when something is is shown uh, in 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 its goodness, um, if 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 that's all you have to compare and contrast it to, and this is the logical point of it, uh, it it's good, and you can see it being good, um, but it's got nothing to compare and contrast to, as opposed to over and against something evil, right? You can actually, oh oh my goodness, this is how evil something was and now this is how uh, amazingly good all of this is right so from a logical point of view jesus is actually saying that like maybe even perhaps uh this 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 light uh is is uh shining brighter because of uh, uh we were once in the darkness maybe type thing um <clears throat> but then in the christological point of view like you said uh all of this uh, the incarnation right? The, the lamp has come, the light has come, uh, and we're just waiting and we're thinking, okay, he's going to make himself manifest in the ways that we think, right? He's going to glorify himself as in all the ways that we think it should be. And Jesus actually never does that. Like you said, he just tells everybody to be quiet. Don't say anything. Don't tell this miracle. Keep all of that stuff hidden. Um, and so then where is, where's the real glory shown? Where does that come from? It's it's from the cross. Pay attention to what you hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Because this is this is the the what you have more will be given. If if all you have is the law and your ability to let your your light shine to yourself, more of the law is going to be heaped upon you. If all you have is the law, more will be given. But if all you have is is the cross, still even more will be given to you now. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And so that's where his ultimate glory is revealed, or whatever glory, uh, or, or the the glory that we need to know. Right. That's, and uh, that's that's the thing that lasts because otherwise the the light of yours that that shines from your your bosom uh, it really only makes people uncomfortable after communion uh, and even what you have will be taken away as it should you, you should you should not have that song <laughs> it just, that song should be taken away from you immediately immediately those one cup of music I like that it's on brand it's, it's nice. Know. Wait, it's yeah. it's backwards there, is it? That's yeah, fine. no, that's fine. I, mean, oh. I reading's hard. Do you, do, you um, one, do you have one of these? Yeah, I don't have one of those. I like them, um, but I'll tell you, uh, whoever manufactured them, uh, you need to have a vice grip to unscrew this thing. I don't know if anybody else does. Maybe I got a, 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 a one that doesn't work. Um, you got to be like Popeye to get that thing off. Anyways. Just a just a little heads up for next time. I don't even know what to say. Um, <laughs> so uh, Jesus, he being Jesus, said, uh, "The kingdom of God is like if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, and he does not know how the earth produces by itself. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear." But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts it in the sickle because the harvest has come. And he said also, what can we compare the king with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of the seeds on the earth. Yet when it, it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out the large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This is the word of the Lord. Well, and you got to finish that up. Right? All fine. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we're thankful. Yes, we were not earlier, which is true because we're sinners. Um, but uh, I, wanted, uh, I wanted to start with that last thing, and then we'll go, yeah. kind of go back. It is interesting, right? So in, in this way, and this is the beginning of Jesus' uh, uh, ministry, in this way, he's only teaching in parables. We kind of talked about this a little bit beforehand. Um, 
but this is the way in which he's deciding to teach because parables are of the gospel. Um, they're mysteries, right? Uh, they contain the secrets of the kingdom of God. It, right. has to be, it has to be the gospel. Right. And so in this way, he's going to be teaching. It's not as if he isn't. It's interesting. It's weird because <clears throat> last week we had that thing, right, where they're quoting uh, Isaiah, right, that uh, uh, Jesus, for for specific reasons, is is keeping these things hidden. But not really, but kind of. Like, I, you can only understand the gospel through the lens of faith. Otherwise, it makes <clears throat> it makes zero sense. Otherwise, it's completely uh, uh, just a, a total mess, and it's backwards, and the, the pieces don't connect, and it's not rational. Like, the law is. That makes sense. A plus B equals C and all of that. Um, but the gospel doesn't. Um, so I do like how, he, uh, how it says here... Uh, this way, they spoke uh, uh, to, to everybody in parables, but um, privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. And you know um, that the disciples then knew exactly what was going to go on for the whole rest of the ministry and had no problems with the cross at all. I mean, the first Spoiler part alert. is true. They, they knew. It's just, it's <laughs> it's inconceivable. Um, but actually, I, I think this is this is still it. This is a question of law and gospel. I, I, I got to believe that if, if you're looking for a Messiah of the law, a, a new Moses to simply be Moses, to, to remind you of the rules, but like this time in more of a, an approachable way, um, it, it needs to be simultaneously both more... Uh, um, relevant to my days and, and also easier to do. Um, because even though my days are, are killing me and, and I'm sure that if I just tried harder, but I can't, it would, it sort itself out somehow. I need, I need a simpler, it, it, it makes no sense. If all you want is that kind of a law, you're going to dash yourself to pieces and you're going to go looking for it in the parables. And there's going to be never Jesus, at least actually Jesus for you. Um, that, that this not only has to be taught to them privately, um, even as it's taught publicly in parables, but it has to be taught to them over and over and over again, because even having heard the gospel, we still fall back on trying to make, make our lives by the law. Right. No, I think, I think you're, <clears throat> you're exactly right. It, that is our, that is our natural inclination. Because because for the sinner, the gospel isn't enough, right? I mean, it just it just it's just it, it's mind boggling that no, it could be this simple, this free, this clear. Um, especially when I've got the 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 weight and the burdens of 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 real sin upon you know that cross is good for the for the everyday uh, cookie jar uh, uh, sins, but not the real ones, right? Right. Not the, the, the Jews demand signs and the Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, which is folly. Um, but to us, we're being saved. It is the power and wisdom of God. Right. And, and, and I, I mean, I think all of us do this, um, depending on uh, uh, it, it's going to look different for all of us. But there is that even for good Lutherans, there is that sinful, sinful desire to to still need to and want to do something. Um in, in, in order to, to aid in, in something, I, I, I gotta, right. I gotta, I gotta give Jesus a little bit, a and little bit of effort. I think it's these parables because you look at what the gospel is and it looks like the mustard seed. It looks like the thing that's just not ready yet. Um, like one day in heaven, great, fine. But until then, this is still a little seed, not a big tree. This is, this is not actually ready for harvest yet. The gospel cannot actually be finished now when I still look like this and struggle like I do. Right. And I'm tired of the same old answers. Right. <clears throat> Although it is odd. Uh, that uh, such a small seed that hasn't actually grown to fruition yet uh, has uh, stood the test of time for 2,000 years and has spread its branches over the entirety of the world. Um, <laughs> I got <laughs> But yes, you're right. I got that, problems. That is, that is too small still. <laughs> That's actually, it makes it feel smaller. Um, because you're right, like Christianity in of itself, like it's easy to, to think of it as a joke because there's a sarcastic 13 year old on YouTube talking about it that way. But also um, it, it has survived famine and plague and the, the brightest minds who maybe didn't even get to Google things, but had things memorized that we couldn't conceive of and, and thought logically. Uh, it, it actually did bring them comfort. But what does that say to me when it doesn't bring me comfort, when everybody around me actually feels better or at least looks like they do and I still feel 
empty. Oh, but that's just gross. that's just the thing. It it brought them comfort in the same way that it brings us comfort, uh, and in the same way that it brings all sinners comfort. Where it is, uh, I, yeah, I'm still terrified, um, and I still want to doubt this sort of stuff because the the sinful flesh in me, right? Like, I mean, you you look at <clears throat> you look at Paul, uh, and I we're, we're going probably way off topic and we'll, we'll try and rein back into the, this, the seed and mustard seed stuff here in a second. But yeah. you look at, you, you just look at Paul where he had some sort of, uh, uh, some sort of thorn in his flesh. So severe. This is the man who's been in jail, been shipwrecked, right? Almost drowned, did all of these things, uh, been stoned, been chased out of towns, all of these different things. He had a thorn so uh, uh, difficult for him that he continuously prayed, begged for the Lord to take it away. And he had to be reminded over and over, um, is my assumption, um, but certainly that one time, that what? My grace is sufficient for you, right? My power is perfect, perfect, perfect in weakness. In weakness, right. So it's okay. Well, that, I guess I got to hear that again because, um, because yeah, I think if, if, if the gospel were working like it should, um, I should be fine. And I shouldn't have temptation. I shouldn't have suffering. The shame should be gone and the guilt should be washed away perfectly. And I should never feel bad. And and the fact that it it isn't that way, <clears throat> there's only two things that could be true. Rationally, the gospel isn't real or the gospel isn't for me. Yay. <laughs> Christ says differently, right? <laughs> Has to. So what does he say that, that actually answers this then? Well, I think here it is, right? It, uh, it, I think the, the, this parable, the first one, right? The kingdom of God is uh, if a man should scatter seed on the ground, he sleeps and rises day and night, and it sprouts and grows. He knows not how, right? The earth produces by itself. This is <clears throat> the mystery of what this gospel, of, of what Christ crucified actually does and accomplishes for you. Um, it does things for you and in you that you can't explain. It doesn't make sense. And yet it is true. It is God's promise for you. And this guy who's scattered seed has no idea that, you know, three months later when he wakes up during during the, the rainy season, now he's got corn out there. That he doesn't get how that happens, but it does. And it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing for the gospel. It's the same thing for the gospel for, for us uh, and, and in us. It will actually, it will produce exactly what Christ says it will, which is this repentance. It is this faith. It is this self. It'll, it'll receive this salvation. It, this is what it does. This is what Christ does for you over and over. <clears throat> so when do we stop needing it? Like, let, give, me the, give me the good. Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Never, uh, right? I mean, I, you, you know that we 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 know that, but like in practice, still most of Christianity seems to be just dead set on. As soon as I grab hold of it, all right, that was great. I'm glad I have it. Now, how do I not need it next time? Right, Be, and and then we turn to the law again, right? Yeah. Because okay, people. good. Jesus, uh, we want to be synergists, which is uh, we want to we want to work alongside of of Jesus for our salvation, or something. We want to we want to have some skin in the game. We have to. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense that God would have us have skin in the game too. So, <clears throat> which is thanks be to God that we don't. Right. I mean, not not in regards to our salvation. That's for darn sure. We can speak that way in regards to our service for to to our neighbors, but. Not for our salvation. All right. You got anything else here? Or you want to keep going? Uh, speaking of 13 year olds on Twitter, nah, that's not right. Nope. Right. TikTok? Edit undo. Yeah. 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 But speaking of 65 year olds on Twitter, uh, would they would they say, uh, but the mustard seed wasn't the smallest seed? See, there Jesus it is. is a dummy. Yeah. What do you say to that? Boom. Uh, he, he was talking to people who actually had ears to hear. They, do you want to get distracted by going into the ins and outs of the things that they don't have in their part of the world? Like maybe this this isn't the point. What's the small seed of the world? But is it, where is where is their salvation and hope in something that looks too small to to hold it? 
Um, I, I don't know that that Jesus is sort of drawing a line in the sand and saying, if you find a smaller seed, then I won't rise from the dead. I'm, pay, I'm taking my ball and going home. Um, we, we don't base our faith on whether or not there is a smaller seed than the mustard seed, but whether or not Christ is risen from the grave. And that's not to reduce the rest of the scriptures into not mattering, but to sort of read them in light of, of actually driving to a larger point. Right. No, I don't. Yeah. Everybody's heard this, right? Did they make these these uh, these logical conclusions? Jesus didn't know that there's a smaller seed, which means he doesn't know everything, which means he can't be who he claimed to be, which means Christianity is disproven all because of this. It's just silly. It's it's Take lazy, that, Christians. Right? <clears throat> it's lazy. It's 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 uh, it's it's a lazy um, philosophical argument. You're not actually dealing with the text that Jesus is putting forward. You're not actually dealing with the, uh, with the, the promises, whether or not those are real or false, uh, true or for you or whatever. You're, you're taking some sort of stupid thing, trying to knock down the whole house of cards with it. <clears throat> it's dumb. Don't let people do that. To the one who has more will be given, but to the one who has not even what he has will be taken away. Great man. You know what the smallest seat is. Do you, still lose sleep at night with with despair because i can i got the remedy for that mm -hmm. maybe i don't know good should we right. uh should we if we got uh we're at what 20 20 yeah. 34 35 no i know we're gonna I mean, we're gonna finish at the yeah. jesus comes the storm we're finishing out chapter four my man on that day when evening had come he being jesus said mm -hmm. to them let us go across to the other side and leaving the crowd they took him being jesus with them in the boat and just as just as he being jesus was the other yeah. boats were with him being, being jesus. jesus yeah and a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling but he being jesus was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him being jesus and said to him being jesus Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he being Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he being Jesus said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this then that even the wind and the sea obey him? Being Jesus. Jesus. Being Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you. They probably just got confused about the pronouns, which is why they're asking. <laughs> which, who is this he we're talking about? Hmm. Uh, pronouns. We're going to get a letter. Butchering <laughs> the scriptures. Right. Well, I'm not. I learned it from watching you. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> All right. So, yeah. That's a good is... commercial. It's, Do you remember that commercial? I dated commercial, man. I know. I, egg in the frying pan? Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is your brain on drugs. All right. Yeah. Where did you, mm. where did you get I these? learned it from watching you. Yeah. I do that to my kids sometimes. They have no idea what it's about. They don't really even know what commercials are because they have no. Netflix. But I, um, I, I still really enjoy it. They get so mad. It's like whenever they say, guess what? And I, I just liturgically they respond. And they say no when I say yes, and we have a fight about it. And they say, fine, what do you want to know? And then, then they tell me the thing. Anyway. Um, I have a shirt that, ha that says, guess what? And an arrow and then a picture of a chicken. It's pointing to its butt. Bet your kids like it. They do. It's one of my favorite shirts. It's a good shirt. <clears throat> so what do we got here? Jesus calming a storm. Right. Um, Jesus not caring while everybody's about to die. Right. I, I think that's the better name for this story. Right. This is the story about Jesus asleep on the job, clearly not caring while everybody else is terrified. This is the the more the, the relatable story in our lives. Where was God when everything was falling apart? Asleep in the front of the boat. Um, I, I love sort of getting to the other place where I can say, I, I understand now everything is fine and I'm never going to freak out again. But um this is the story of Jesus asleep on the job just as much as it is Jesus calming the storm. So make it make comfort. Even if I can't make it make sense. You make it make comfort when you say Jesus is asleep on the job. Like, uh, are you, are you saying that uh, uh, cynically? What do you, what do you say it here? I know it's what it says in the text. I'm right. just reading the text for what it is. Like he's not pretending to be asleep. Like, have you ever just like pretended to be asleep so you wouldn't have to answer your kids questions? Yeah. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> Quit, no, we just do sleep. Do we do we we do see uh, we do see the the some of the humanity of Jesus here. 
Um, but mm. it's it, it, it the, the very fact that I he does it's more of his divinity go. Well, I mean, just the very fact that he is asleep, right? The very fact that he he does have these these human needs, right? <clears throat> and yet, at the same point in time, he is he is Israel reduced to one. He is the one who can indeed endure a storm and not be terrified, right? <clears throat> Why? Because, and, and it's not because I know that I'm going to get through uh, to the other side because I'm omniscient. I don't think that's it, right? It's it's the way in which uh, he's the only one who can actually uh, uh, fulfill all of these things. He's the only one who knows that his heavenly father is in, in control of all and has all things placed under his feet. And therefore, there is no other thing that, that needs to be feared. Actually, this is it. This is always revealed to me more of his divinity than his humanity. Because look, he, he's asleep, so he's a person. He's a true man. Really, this is this is that that you can sleep while everything is falling around, falling apart around you. It it speaks more to your calm than everybody else's panic. Um, it, this is the Psalms made real. Awake, O oh sleeper, rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your faith? Why do you forget our affliction and our oppression? Our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our belly clings to the ground. Rise up, resurrect, come to our help, redeem right, us for the sake of your steadfast love. But that's that's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, this isn't. I, but I, I I disagree with you. This is not. This is not his divinity. It doesn't speak to his divinity. It speaks to his humanity. It speaks to who we were actually called to be. You know, without sin, this would be us. With we would have no fear of the things of of anything of the things of creation. There would be no fear there. Right. And then even afterwards with sin, what is what is required of us? Right. It, it, the, the thing. What's the first commandment? You should have no other gods. Right. We should fear, love and trust in, in nothing other than God. Right. So to fulfill to fulfill that law, as we are called to do, as 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 Israel was called to do, um, this shows right here, I think, in, in a very uh, uh, blatant way that that Jesus is fulfilling what we could not. Jesus is, is Israel reduced to one. Even amongst the winds and the waves, even amongst the things that that could, uh, 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 for all intents and purposes, uh, end life, um, he's taking a nap. Right. So I, I, we can be an historian and try and pick apart the divinity from the humanity all we want, like they're like they're they're doable, like that's doable. But at the end of the day, maybe that's fair. Like if it's not concerning Jesus as much as it's concerning you, maybe it's not because Jesus doesn't care. Maybe it's actually just because you're you're a little bit too focused on the wrong things and and the things that are actually working salvation, the things that have already done been done to save you they're concrete they're they're not getting undone. And so you're going to be brought through this no matter how you feel in this particular moment. Right. And, and I think then, so this is contrasting uh, uh, Jesus with, with the, the, the apostles, with, again, their inability uh, to fulfill that first commandment, um, fear, love, and trust in nothing other than, than God, right? Well, they're, they're fearing the wind and the waves, right? They're fearing death. They're fearing all of these things. And Enough so the, to yell at God. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Should you be dealing with this situation in a better way than you are creator of all things? But but he, he answers it in mercy, though. He, he When it's time, he gets up, calms the storm, and life's right. good. Peace, be still. The wind is... So what is this? Uh, uh, yeah, what do you make of this? He said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you, uh, have you still no faith? Well, I, I I think that this is pointing to the fact that they do. Um, if you want to measure how much faith you have by sort of like saying this is directly inverse to how much fear you have, like if you were really afraid, you 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 would uh, you would have no faith, and if if you were really faithful, you would have no fear. Um, but but rather sort of a, a returning to the source because faith is not measured; faith is given. Um, keep returning to Jesus. That's where your faith comes from. The Holy Spirit brings you Jesus. That is faith and trust in him. But but also um, sinners who are this side of glory will continue to need to be brought to Jesus. You being a sinner will continue to be afraid. So you need to be brought to Jesus to say, do not be afraid. Like yeah. it, it, It's not one and done. How can I no longer need Jesus? We just talked about this. Right. And, and, and also I think it go back earlier. Like where did they go? When when they're terrified, where where do they Jesus. actually? They do yeah. actually go to Jesus. You guys actually they did to, this right the whole time, <laughs> right? And they go to Jesus, uh, not just to wake him up and be like, "Hey, Jesus, we're good at all die." 
Um, but with an expectation that Jesus will fix it just might be the one who could fix this. Yeah. Right. Like I, I, I it seems as if they do. And, but so I think what Jesus is, is, is saying here is like, you, you got it. Like, but I'm here. Like right. what, I, what, what I've promised to do and take care of you. Why, it's the great, why, I believe, help my unbelief. Right. All over again. Exactly. Why, why be afraid? Why be afraid? Yeah. I'm here. I'm here for you. You're fine. I love it. Let's let's stop here. That's, that's a really peaceful note. Plus, I have to go get my kids from school. So. Prove it. Okay. We out.